All right, folks, here's the uh, pretty much the final assembly on the horizontal stabilizer here. I've got the nose ribs attached, and you can see I've used some square tubing down here. My table has a very, very slight uh, bow to it in the center, so when you have the full stabilizer from end to end, you have a very, very small, not even maybe a millimeter gap uh, where the table uh, sags just slightly in the center. I'm actually going to bolster that before I start the wings and the fuselage with a center brace and then an adjustable foot pad on it so that I can draw that, that bow up out of it and make the table perfectly flat. But for now, to assemble these, all I did was I took these uh, square tubing and I laid them underneath the spar and then set the rib on top of it so that the bottom edge of this rib where it's flat so you can see it's straight across there that's actually the top of the horizontal stabilizer and then this curved surface is actually the bottom because it's the inverted design but by setting uh, the spar on top of that two by two set of tubing uh, then I can I can rest both of them flat down on there I was able to brace the nose rib against the tubing underneath and kept those perfectly in line so that they're actually both up off the table a little bit and that's because of the bow but when I had it up nice and tight then they're both perfectly in line like that and it worked out really well these two by two square tubing then four foot lengths come in real handy for drilling through things and keeping Clecos up off the table when you've got stuff clamped from underneath so <clears throat> the nose ribs went pretty well I actually had a little mishap on this one I uh, when I was trimming the flange off, when I formed this, I trimmed too much of it off, and so when I went to drill this to match drill it to the spar, uh, there really wasn't enough edge material there for me to be feel comfortable with, so I just added another rivet hole here, and that will hold just fine. This all gets, you know, uh, riveted together to the skin anyway, so it's not gonna go anywhere with an extra rivet or two in it. So I did the same thing on the bottom, even though I had plenty of edge distance there. Just popped a couple more A4 rivet holes uh, in there to hang on to everything and uh, not any sort of worried about that that's okay and these are the types of mistakes that you might end up having with plans building when not all your holes are drilled for you and not all your parts are formed so there's about one rivet diameter uh, edge distance there on that flange when really you have to have a bare minimum of one and a half so that's that's why I put the extra rivet hole in there moving on to the tip ribs you can see here I've added that doubler I was talking about, the spacer here. That's an extra piece of 40 thousandths that goes down around the entire uh, back end of the tip rib. You know, so when I go ahead and rivet that down, it's going to clamp down nice and tight. And it shifted the tip rib about a millimeter forward. So when I was locating my L angles on the inside here to bolt to the front spar, I took a couple of measurements and determined that where I had my center line or my center line drawn for the rivets on the outside versus where I needed them for the angle. You can see the rib is now shifted very slightly forward of the spar here. Normally that line would be right on line with the spar. It's now shifted forward about a mil and a half, maybe two millimeters at the most. That was of course due to this spacer I put in there. I figured that at nine millimeter on center from that line, uh, when I went to mark the angle, 11 millimeters put it exactly where I needed it to be so that the lengths match up with everything. So I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but uh, what I did was took my uh, dial calipers, my cheap $10 Harbor Freight dial calipers here, and uh, these have come in handy more times than you can possibly imagine, but using the uh, basically the depth gauge here uh, on the tailstock there, I was able to confirm that these ribs do stick out exactly from from the uh, front of the spar to the very tip uh, they perfectly match these nose ribs now and all the rest of the measurements are consistent the, the distance between the two of the front and rear spar here here at each rib station they're all you know within a millimeter or two i would say within a millimeter at the worst so that's how i compensated for that it's a little bit of extra work to do it and uh, i I, th I think it was well worth it just to make sure that the nose the curvature on these uh, nose ribs and the tip ribs are all within line of each other without any weird protrusions or anything that the metals then got to try to buckle and form to and it gives it good you get the very leading edge of the nose skin resting up against the noses of these ribs now so it's maximum strength on that structure so the only thing left to do on this is to uh, fix the uh, rear bracket problem like I talked about with the not enough material sticking up 
uh, off the back. It very easily could have been some kind of error that I did, but you know, looking at the drawings and taking measurements with dial calipers and everything else, I can't see where I messed anything up that would have suggested that you know it's just me that assembled it wrong. <laughs> so very possible that's what happened, but measuring all the parts out, they're all to spec. I can't see where you know I made a mistake, and uh, you know hopefully that's what it is. But the only way for me to compensate for that is to add another four millimeters of material to this length or height, if you will, so that I get the proper protrusion from the bottom to anchor to the fuselage. So, because this is the bracket that anchors to the fuselage, and you can see this line right here, that is the taper of the fuselage as it goes back towards the rear of the plane. So if this is the front of the fuselage, uh, this is where the tail cone goes back and then the rudder mounts behind that, uh, further behind the, uh, within the elevator area. So this is the attach point here and here, here and here. Those are the only four places that this bolts down to the fuselage. So it's critical that this part be right. It's just the question is which part's right? Is the part right or is the drawing wrong or did I mess something up? But I want to get that 30 millimeters sticking out of the bottom because that's going to, relative to the fuselage, that's going to potentially cause some angle problems when I go to attach it. So I need to have that 30 millimeter sticking out there and the 35 millimeter sticking out here to be able to get the, in, uh, the um, you know, angle of the wing, the incidence, if you will, proper to the fuselage. But overall, I mean, it's, you know, maybe another half an hour worth of work to remake that part. And uh, I'll have that done here shortly, hopefully. But so far, pretty good looking on this horizontal stabilizer skeleton. It's going to be ready for skin as soon as I get those brackets uh, fixed up. So... All right, folks, so this is the last update on the skeleton for the horizontal stabilizer. I've reoriented this so that it's in line with the drawings now. Match drilled it to a new hinge bracket and the new slightly extended tail bracket here. I discovered that my original one uh, was a little too wide. It was about three or four millimeters too wide. That was an error I had made in the uh, forming process. However, that actually didn't affect the, the height issue, so I went ahead and added five millimeters. So now I have the 30 millimeters from the edge of the spar up to the top here and it goes all the way down to the full length of the spar so I've got plenty of room for my rivets. And then there's that accidental rivet there and because this thing actually shrunk widthwise just a little bit uh, there's plenty of room for that accidental rivet hole there for me to fill that with a rivet so I don't have that on this side but uh, everything is now match drilled. The only thing left to do on this uh, as far as drilling is concerned is all of these holes get opened up to A5 and then the tip holes here and here these two holes where my thumb and index finger are, these actually get uh, drilled out for a bolt, and I believe it's a quarter inch bolt. Uh, it might be a 3 16 bolt that goes on uh, either edge of this. Bolts, of course, being much, much stronger than uh, pop rivets. So uh, everything else gets drilled out to A5. These two holes get drilled out for the uh, bolt specified in the plans, and then uh, that's it. So not much else to show here. I've got to double check and see if I should or if it calls for riveting this together before actually putting the skin on it. Um, I'm always leery about doing that because when you drill these areas out for the skins, you know, you end up with the gaps and things right here. And if this thing's all solid riveted together, you simply just cannot um, deburr it. So there are places where you do that, where you set a final rivet even though you didn't deburr the hole, there are only a few places where that's actually called for in the assembly manual. But what I'll probably end up doing is taking and turning all these clecos around where they where they would interfere with the skinning process. So these these nose clecos here would all get flipped around and re reattached from the inside. And then I can go ahead and uh, skin it while it's just cleco together, get everything drilled, lined up, take it all apart, make sure everything's deburred properly then prime it, reassemble it, and a final rivet, the uh, at least the skeleton, if not the skin. I'm going to leave, uh, for most of the work that I'm doing on this, I'm going to not do a final riveting on the skins. So what I'll do is probably set the riveting around the bottom side, but leave the top so that I can pop the clecos out and open that up, you know, for wiring purposes and, you know, anything else just for a final kind of double check before I close them up entirely, but I'll be able to, you know, basically close everything up except for one side so that any, you know, I can have either have it inspected by an EAA technical counselor 
or a uh, and or anybody that I want to have take a look at it before I actually close up this skeleton. But I'll have to log the hours here, but I think I probably got about, oh, 20 hours of, uh, maybe 15 hours or 20 hours of actual assembly for the skeleton itself, uh, not counting any uh, reforming of parts that I needed to do, but pretty happy with this progress. So we will uh, be back with another video on the skinning process. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your projects.